Okay, I can see we've got a few more attendants uh, popping in. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, this is our first uh, of hopefully a lot of uh, webinars we're going to run. Um, if you um, uh, have a question to ask, you can hit the button at the bottom of your screen, mark Q&A, and just type in your question there. Now, I see a few people have already emailed through questions, but you're certainly welcome to put your uh, question into that Q&A section as well. And what we will do is we'll go through uh, all of those questions. Okay, well, we're just waiting for everyone. I'm just going to pop a quick uh, question up on screen, uh, just a little poll, uh, just to see if this is working. So feel free to uh, answer away. Uh, I expect a, a yes from Mr. Bartlett as well. Okay, so we've got about 60% uh, of you have now voted. If you haven't voted yet, just hit the button. Okay, we're at 90%, we have got a few more people waiting on. Okay, for those of us just uh, joining, uh, welcome to our first webinar. Um, what we'll be doing is we'll be starting shortly at seven o'clock. If you have a question, uh, you'll see a Q&A button down the bottom of the screen. Just click on that button there and uh, you can type in your question. And what we'll do is we'll try to get to all of those uh, questions uh, through the evening. Uh, we'll be starting just after seven o'clock just to allow the, the couple of late people uh, to, to join us as well. And uh, you should also see a poll on screen. Um, no right or wrong answer. Um, people like all sorts of careers in aviation, pilot, engineer, all that sort of stuff. We really just want to make sure that everything's working and all our systems are good to go. I'll end that poll in about another 20 seconds. Okay, I see somebody mentions here they have no mic or camera on the computer screen, need to link up uh, the iPad, but it's asking me to register again. Um, if you use the email uh, from your uh, link, that should get you in. Uh, I will also just now try and quickly um, resend you that link as well. Okay, I'll just pop our results up on the screen there. Okay, for the person who's having problems, I resent you the email to log in, so hopefully that will work for you fine. And for the person who was just asking if I can resend it to a different email address, unfortunately, I'll have to ask you to re-register, but as soon as you've done that, I can approve you uh, to, to get back in. Okay, um, it's now a couple of minutes past seven o'clock. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few of you now uh, having joined us. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start now and uh, the format for this evening, uh, we've got along uh, Mr. Tim Bartlett, who is a, uh, uh, as well as being an Air League uh, officer now, he is a former cadet and he's also an airline long haul pilot. And uh, he's come on this evening to uh, tell us a little bit about his career, where, how he got to where he is today. And also more importantly, to answer some of the questions that you might uh, uh, have regarding, uh, regarding uh, careers in aviation, flying, and all sorts of questions like that. Uh, so without much further ado, I'll hand over to Mr. Bartlett to introduce himself. Hey everybody. Um, my name's Tim. I'm an officer of the Australian Air League in uh, Parafield Squadron. Um, so right now I'm joining you guys from uh, Adelaide. And I see we've got a really good amount of attendance right around from Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, and, and also, of course, South Australia. So um, no, welcome everybody. Um, basically, I'm here to give everyone this sort of an in, insight into um, how uh, you get on from being a cadet in the Australian Air League and then uh, what options that and pathways there are of getting yourself into the aviation industry. Uh, the main thing I do want to highlight is the Air League is also for other uh, jobs in the aviation industry. It's not just flying, there's everything from fixing the aircraft to the air traffic control, to the flight attendants, to the ground staff at the airports that make the uh, the check-ins work. So aviation as a whole is a, is, a, is more than just pilots. Um, of course, um, you know, we want to see as many people, uh, cadets go on to being pilots, but there's also the other options as well, which um, is really important to, um, to understand and know that you don't just have to be a pilot. So that poll, it's good to see there's other people that out there that don't necessarily want to be pilots, but are sort of interested in other areas of uh, the aviation industry. I'll definitely try and help out on uh, on those sort of questions um, uh, in other areas of aviation. But of course, uh, I'll be more um, in the expertise of, of knowing the pilots sort of questions. 
Um, yeah, so hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm monitoring the chat. So if anybody needs me to speak louder or, or whatnot, please don't hesitate to write something in the chat. And I can see we've already got quite a few questions there. So um, we'll, we'll get around to those questions shortly. Uh, I suppose I'll give a little, that's right, so we can't see you, hang on, that's all right. Um, sorry, I am very new to this, so start video. Uh, Mr. Grinter, it says I can't uh, ramp a video, is that um, something that I can do my end or is it, is it your end that needs to be changed? That is actually a very good question, just let me have a quick look here. Um, well, make a hope. While you're doing that, okay. Excellent, this is of course new technology. Um, um, so while you're doing that, uh, basically, so I joined the Australian Air League at the age of eight. Uh, and I'd always wanted to be a pilot, even from the age of uh, four or five, I used to go down to the airport. And as soon as I turned eight, I joined the Air League uh, because I wanted to find out um, how I could be a pilot. And the Air League is the best organisation that you can be in if you are interested in, in being a pilot or being involved in the airline or aviation industry. So um, please keep that in mind. Uh, it's, it's definitely a fantastic organisation and it's encouraging and, and inspiring everybody to, to get involved with, with flying and, and aviation. And there's a photo of, uh, of when I was flying a glider. So I actually was privileged enough to, um, through the Air League, to start gliding at the age of 13. And hopefully um, your squadrons and your wings and groups have uh, done gliding days and whatnot. Uh, so I, I joined at age of eight, went through, said started uh, gliding when I was 13. Um, I, I love gliding because you don't have an engine and it's also the, the cheapest way to, uh, to get flying as well. Uh, and it's a great club, so uh, atmosphere. So there's people that will volunteer their time to teach you how to fly and, and whatnot um, outside of, uh, and it's in, in accordance with the Air League as well. Uh, I was promoted through the ranks, I uh, got to, uh, sergeant and was the Air League National Care of the Year in 2007, which was a great honour. And uh, there's some uh, photos there of uh, one of the uh, National Care of the Year competitions, and that's 2007. Uh, and um, if you ever get the opportunity, definitely something that's worth aiming for at a group or, or national level. Uh, so I went through school really focused on on knowing they wanted to be a pilot and whatnot, and the the um the decisions you have going into to aviation there's so many different pathways and it can be a bit confusing um so of course you're doing the right thing being a, a cadet of the australian air league because you've got a bit of an insight and some and some cheaper ways as of, of learning to fly or, or knowing about aviation and the theory with uh with the pathway in of course uh we all know that the, the military is one pathway as well, and I definitely was uh, interested in that pathway, um, but I'd always wanted to fly big jets or airliners, so I was really focused on, on, on that side of things. Um, so while I was a cadet, I was gliding, and I was able to go solo at uh, 15 years of age, which is the when you're flying gliders, the first time you can fly by yourself is 15. Uh, that's a little bit different to normal planes, like powered planes, like your Cessnas and whatnot. If you've gone down to, uh, um, there's a few people saying they can't hear. If you can hear, can you just let me know on the on the chat window, please? That's all right. I'll continue anyway. Um, okay, excellent. Um, so there's uh, so a few different. Um, um, as, as a powered aircraft like a Cessna, you can go solo at the age of 16. So even before that, you can start your training. It just means you can't fly by yourself. So we've got cadets that have started gliding like, like I did at 13 and, and just waited to their 15th birthday to fly glider or basically started their power to flying a little Cessna 172 or 152. And um, basically on their 16th birthday, they've been able to get out uh, and fly by themselves around the circuit uh, at Moorabbin or Bankstown or Archerfield uh, or Parafield here in South Australia, all those, uh, those airfields that you've seen. Uh, then um, with, with the pathways I was talking about, if you are interested in going down and flying 
airlines and what we call the commercial route, then this is the best opportunity at the moment that you have getting into an airline because we have what's called cadet programs. So every airline, um, whether it be Qantas, they've just opened up a, a cadet school. Uh, we've got Cathay Pacific, which I'll talk about in a moment, which is my airline that I work for. I was able to get through a cadet program. There's um, small airlines in Australia like Alliance, uh, Virgin, Rex, Regional Express. They all have these what we call cadet programs, which are sponsored pathways into the airlines. It means there's a set pathway that you can basically you do an interview with them and they tell you where you're doing your training. They may even give you some discount or some funding towards the training or even the opportunity to take a loan. And you know at the end of your training that you're gonna get a job with them or at least be considered um, first for, for job opportunities. So when I was finishing my final years of high school, I applied for every single airline cadetship I could find. And, that, and I got op, uh, the opportunity to um, go up to Hong Kong with Cathay Pacific. Uh, that's Hong Kong's main airline and um, interviewed for uh, an airline cadet program with them. It's the first time I'd ever left Australia. And uh, I was at the time just turned 18 and they offered me a cadet program. So I was very lucky, but it was a slightly different pathway into the industry. Than, than other people would have. And it meant that I got to teach the Hong Kong Chinese cadets at Parafield Airport. A picture there is with the school that I worked for, uh, Flight Training Adelaide. And I got to, before I started flying the big Cathay Pacific jets, I got to teach on this, the smaller aircraft um, with, with Cathay Pacific and, and, um, and got to teach. And at 19, I was teaching cadets from, other, from, from airlines out of Hong Kong. And, um, and that was uh, my opportunity. To, I love teaching and I got to do three years of that before moving up to Hong Kong. And um, at which point, very different flying. You can see there, that's a picture of a, in front of an A330 um, that uh, I was, uh, was flying at uh, the age of about 23. Um, so I've just got a few people asking questions here. I'll try, I will try and stop and, and answer some questions as I go through. So just bear with me if you are um, wanting to ask some questions. Yeah. I'll uh, just uh, jump in here a moment, Tim. Yeah, uh, just yeah absolutely. For the, for, for the cadets and officers, or people, the attendees who have joined us late, uh, you will see at the bottom of your screen, there is a, a button there marked Q&A. Uh, what you can do is if, if you have a question, uh, type in your question there, and uh, what we will do then is we're going to, uh, once uh, Tim has finished his introduction, uh, we're going to uh, bring up some cadets to ask questions so we can give you all a, a chance to ask your, your, your questions uh, directly. So for each uh, attendee who has a question, we will unmute you. You can come forward, ask your question, and then and Tim will be able to answer you from there. Over to you, Tim. Thank you. Uh, so I basically spent the last um, nearly seven years in Hong Kong flying for an airline, Cathay Pacific. So I flew, for those who have done their, um, their GP series, um, you know the Airbus A340, A330. Uh, I was flying those when I joined. Um, so Airbus was my, my first big jet. So flying about 300 passengers around, all around Asia. We'd fly down to Australia. For those who are not sure about Cathay Pacific, they fly into Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and also Adelaide. You might have seen them, the green, green looking aircraft. Uh, and then uh, you start off, in, in, it's different with different airlines, but when you join, you're what's called a second officer, and you cannot do any takeoffs and landings. It's, it's very much a, a role to, to learn how being an airline pilot is, whilst also doing some flying in their simulators for training. And you're above 20,000 feet, I was allowed to, to basically be in a control seat. In other words, be in one of the, the front seats while the captain or the first officer was um, on rescue. For long haul flying, it's, it's very different um, where we have 
more than, than two pilots because we can fly up to 18 hours. We often have three or, or four pilots um, and we sort of take it in turns to, to go off and have a break because nobody wants to work 18 hours straight. That's a long time to be flying, particularly through the night. Uh, and for, for about two years, I was the most junior rank of second officer in with Cathay Pacific. And then after two years, they um, had done all the training I needed to, to be promoted to being a first officer. And that means I could actually do takeoff and landings. And um, the, the most, the highlight of, of my career was we actually took an empty, no passengers, A330 down and we did circuits, just like a Cessna does at, at these um, like small airports like Parafield or Moorabbin or Bankstown. And we did touch and goes in an A330. So uh, that um, is my highlight of my career, being able to fly seven or eight circuits in the 330. And uh, after that, they say, you're good enough to land with passengers on. And um, you were then flying around, I uh, spent most of the next few years flying around Asia, Singapore, Thailand, um, and places like that, Asia and now Australia. But, um, where my career is at the moment, uh, I've been back in Australia for a year. I now work with Qantas, and so it was. I really enjoyed my time in Hong Kong, but it was time to come home to Australia. And of course, I would always wanted to work for Qantas. So when um, they were hiring about a year and a half ago, I put up my hand to come home, and I've been with Qantas ever since. But I kept flying the same aircraft. But unfortunately, uh, I went back to being a second officer again. And that's how there's a strange way of the industry works. You um, sometimes you change your rank and whatnot. So hopefully I'll be, be in a position to be considered uh, going back to first officer, which was my uh, previous rank with my last airline um, very soon. And um, yeah, I'm so uh, I've also once I came back to Australia, I wanted to join the Australian Air League again so that I could teach the, uh, the cadets that uh, uh, the, the next generation of, um, of, of air league cadets who want to go into aviation, not just being a pilot, but all the other areas and whatnot. So, uh, uh, what we might, uh, yeah. I was about to say, Tim, what we might do is we might stop for a couple of questions, um, just to get, uh, allow a couple of cadets to get their questions up. And uh, because Aidan just asked in the chat, we'll grab them up first. So, Aidan, I'm, I'm about to invite you into. Um, I think I can do this, just bear with me a moment. Okay, so Aidan has a question here. Uh, as a pilot, do you have different contracts for different airlines? Yes, um, absolutely. So with, uh, with each airline, you can um, be on domestic contracts. So if I was flying in Australia with, with Jetstar, for example, you generally fly domestically. And uh, that can be different amounts of flying and different types of flying and different amounts of uh, patterns, we call them. So domestically, you might go to work one day and fly three flights or even four flights, Melbourne, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, for example. Uh, with the flying that I do, which is long haul flying, uh, I quite like that because it means that I fly long flights and we'll, we'll go somewhere. So. For example, with uh, with Qantas, I'll fly from Sydney to Hong Kong, which is ironically where I used to work, and I'll okay, stay there. For I've, I've just found the button. What I'm going to do, I've, I've just got, uh, I'll let Aidan in to talk. So Aidan, your microphone should come on in a minute, and you can ask another question that you might have. Let's see if this works. Good, Aidan. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Whereabouts are you at the moment? So, in which squadron? I'm at Harbour Squadron. Oh yes, another one. QRD? Yes. So what, what was the question that you had? So my question was, as a pilot, do you have different contracts for different airlines? So like, um, when you're like, if you're flying, say for like Qantas, mm -hmm. and then after a while, do you have like a different contracts? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I fly long haul flying at the moment, um, which means that I go away for longer flights and I get to go to a hotel in, in Singapore or Hong Kong. We, we generally are away for 24 hours at, at that particular destination, so one day, and then we fly yeah. home. But it means that I get a couple of days off uh, to recover. 
because we've sometimes we're working through the night. Um, but every airline is, is slightly different. Um, generally, all the big airlines, Qantas, Cathay Pacific, uh, and whatnot, were very similar, but the flying can be different. So I'm actually uh, also considering eventually flying domestically, which Qantas uh, do domestically flying around Australia and a little bit of New Zealand, which means that I'll be doing a lot more flights, but a lot shorter flights. So, how, how do you know when your contract's finished? Um, it, it's the contract. Most jobs are ongoing. It means they, I mean, they always need pilots, and they when when an airline takes you on, they're investing lots of money and time, and they are picking people who are future captains. So even though you start at uh, at a first officer or second officer rank, depending on the airline, they're making sure that you are ready to be a captain one day. So they want to see you go all the way through. There are some, uh, the question that you have might be related to some of the contracts in different countries. I've got friends and, and colleagues that have flown in Japan or in China, and they might be on a two year or four year contract. And so it's a good way to see different parts of the world as well on those contracts. Um, is that sort of what the question, um, does that answer the question in that regard? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Right. We've also Thanks got uh, Freya. Um, okay, you're on the line. Uh, Hi, Freya, Freya how are you? ask your question. Good evening. Hello, whereabouts are you calling from? Um, I'm from Harvey, the Harvey Bay Squadron in Queensland. Uh, excellent, another one from Harvey Bay. Yeah. And your question is Freya. Uh, my question is, who inspired you to be a pilot? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so the Air League was, was a big part of that. But um, but I, I had the uh, opportunity of um, one of my family friends who was uh, an Air League officer as well. Uh, he works for Emirates now. He sort of uh, took me in the flight simulator. The, the Air League had a flight simulator and uh, also um, he, he would help me out with listening to the the radio calls of planes and whatnot. So anytime he did something new and with his flying, he was doing his training at, pa at Powerfield Airport, I would always ask him questions and whatnot. So um, that that was my um, my main inspiration. He went on to become a captain at Emirates. I still keep in contact with him. Uh, and of course, um, you know, through uh, my dad would also take me down to to the airport and watch the planes take off and land uh, when I was about six or seven. So I also have him to thank for uh, for taking me down and just going down to the airport and, and seeing all these big aircraft landers. I still, even now, even though I fly them, I'm just amazed every time I see one take off and land. Uh, it's just um, unreal. It's, a, it's uh, every time I see it, uh, it's a great inspiration. So uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, um, but the air league is definitely what what kept me um, focusing on on flying. Okay, thank you, Freya. Uh, let's see what other questions we've got here. Okay, we've got Olivia. Now I think you might have already covered your question with Olivia, but uh, we'll That's bring fine. her on anyway. Okay, Olivia. Hello, Olivia. Hello. Can you hear us? Um, how did the, hello. Hi, whereabouts are you from? Gold Coast Squadron, Queensland. Another one from Queensland, good to hear. Sorry, what was your question? Um, how did being the Australian Air League help you become a pilot? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, of course, a lot of the badges and whatnot, theory of flight and GP is uh, where you start learning the um, the basics of flying, the theory and whatnot, which is uh, is very important at all stages. I even look back sometimes through my GP books. That's because uh, even the basics still matter now. I've got to have a do some study and make sure I'm still remembering the the things like the the four forces in flight and whatnot, lift, thrust, drag, uh, and weight. So um, of course, then we do some did some gliding with Air League, and we did the Joy Flight days, the powered uh, flying days, but also um, the Air League has uh, flying camps in some states as well. So there's definitely 
no shortage of different ways in which you can learn and experience different areas of flying um, with being cadet in the Air League. Yeah. Does that, does that help answer your question? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, thanks okay. for your question. Um, I'll just find uh, one more and then we might uh, get uh, Tim to talk us a little bit more about what happened now that he's come back to Australia. Yeah. Uh, let me see who I've got here. Uh, I've got uh, Blake. Okay. G'day, Blake. Hello, Blake. How are you? Hi, Blake. Can you hear us? I'm good. That's oh, good. Hi, Blake. Which squadron are you from? I'm from Gola Airfield and... I know Gola very well. Yeah. Do you recognise that photo of the glider before? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the Adelaide Soaring Club, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, what was your your my, question, Blake? Well, my question is, how many years of training did you need before you could fly a, the big air passenger planes? Yeah, very good question. So before you can fly passenger planes, you need to be able to fly a small plane first. Uh, so I spent nearly a year and a half flying out of you know, Parafield Airport, flying the, the small light aircraft, the, the Cessna 172s, as most of you would know, or the Piper Warriors. Uh, so even though they're not a big aircraft, they, they basically, it's like if you were learning to drive a truck, you need to learn how to drive a small car first, a normal car first. So once you've got the basics, you know how to land a small plane, you know how to navigate and not get lost, you know, fly through cloud in a small plane, and then you're trained on, on, on bigger. But basically, I went from flying the small planes and then uh, once I'd done the, the training on that, got my, my commercial license, as it's called, my CPL. Then when I started with the airline, we, we do most, nearly all of the training in a simulator. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen the simulators, but they move around on hydraulics. <laughs> And the good thing is you can pause it and you can go through things. So we're, we're learning how to land it. Uh, if, if there's a problem with your landing, you can go back and do it again as many times as you want because it's not a real plane, it's a simulator, which is great. And it's so realistic that when you actually get in the real plane, you can um, you, you pretty much know how, to, how it flies because it's made by the manufacturer, which is in my case Airbus, but also Boeing, if you know the Boeing type of planes, the manufacturer. So yes, I do. I'm... Yeah, yeah. So it's it's always something you're training next to, you. and even when I get to the airline, they're, they're teaching you or well, training you how it is to be the next rank. So now that that I'm a second officer at Qantas, they're looking at how I I would um, they're training me to be a first <laughs> officer already even though that it's some time away. Uh, and then in my previous airline in Hong Kong with Cathay Pacific, when I was a first officer, they were already training me to be a captain uh, and, and whatnot. So it was always something next and, and um, it was always a bigger plane. So I got lucky that the fly went from the 330 to the 340, so two more engines, it makes four. Mm -hmm. And then for those who know, uh, the A350 from Airbus, brand new, well, it's a couple of years old now, but still, still brand new in aviation, mm. uh, that was even bigger. So there's always something to look forward to. Okay, we've got a couple of uh, anonymous questions here. Uh, thanks a lot, Blake, by the way. Uh, we've got a few anonymous questions here. So I'll just quickly run through those and we might answer those. Um, how was long haul flying your first preference when you wanted to be a pilot when you were around our ages? Did you ever doubt your love of flying and aviation as well as your dreams and ambitions? Okay, um, so two questions there. I'll, I'll talk about the first one. Uh, I just wanted to be any pilot, to be honest. Um, I didn't uh, actually care whether I wanted to fly long haul or domestic. I was happy to take whatever job I could find. Um, of course, in the uh, in the industry, long haul is the the one that everybody wants to do because you're going to fly to amazing cities. That's different. So flying into New York, which I've done. Um, flying into uh, into the UK, you're going longer trips and going to some cool places. So everyone, people do like long haul. 
but not everybody likes long haul. I've got some friends who prefer just to, in the morning, leave Adelaide, for example, and they go up to Sydney, and they might go to Brisbane and fly back to Adelaide, and they're, they're home that afternoon, and um, they're home every night. So, not everybody likes long haul. For, for me, I wanted, to just, I definitely wanted to do long haul, um, but I'm also um, considering changing to domestic, just to have a different type of flying. Domestically, you can do a lot more landings and takeoffs in one day or, or in a week. Whereas long haul flying, you might only do three or four flights a month. And remember, there's also four pilots on those aircraft. So everybody, you know, only one person is doing the landing, the other people are monitoring and, and doing the radios and, and whatnot. So it's still involved. But only one person is actually maneuvering the plane to land. So. If you like lots of landings, then um, domestic flying or regional flying is is um, what people like there. If you like going to some cool places and, and whatnot, then people like doing long haul. Uh, there was a second okay. part of the question there as well yeah. that I missed. Um, I've just unfortunately cleared that. Um, sorry about that. Uh, if the person who didn't get the second part of the question, if you can re-ask ask that one, we'll, we'll bring that one back. Actually, no, I think I can bring that up. Here it is. Uh, um, did you ever... Did you ever doubt your love of flying, of your love of flying and aviation, as well as your dreams and ambitions? Yeah, it's definitely been challenging at times. Um, I think now is the most challenging uh, time at all. Of course, um, I'm sure you've all been aware that it's been a little bit quieter with flying. There's not too many international flights and, and whatnot. Um, so it's definitely been challenging at, at times. Um, but of course, people always want to fly. People want to go on holidays for business and so uh yeah it's definitely um there's definitely had there's been some challenges along the way but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and if you keep following your dreams and whatnot it's definitely um you know along the way as i've i've had tests and simulator um assessments where because you're always doing your lot making sure you can still fly it's been a bit stressful but like anything it's just like school or uh, doing a driving test or whatnot. It's a little bit being nervous, but um, you are, are ready to do it. It's just uh, with all the training you have, and then you, you do the test or the in the simulator or the theory exam and whatnot. And then afterwards you go, well, I, I did way too much study. Um, so it's uh, it's definitely, um, you know, we, we always, as pilots, we're very professional and whatnot, um, and, and definitely we're so motivated with with flying that we keep we keep focusing on the the goal at the other end, uh, whether it's to be a, flying that new plane or to become a captain um, or getting your next license. So there's there's lots of fun support available. Yeah. Here's a fun anonymous question: How many hours before you went solo? Uh, <laughs> good, good question. I was flying gliders from 13 so if if you want to take hours it took me two years because i waited till i was 15. Nah. but when i went and did my powered flying i was able to go solo in about four hours because okay. i had all that gliding experience so yeah. I, I, I did cheat a bit because i had so much uh, gliding time and also That's simulated good. time yeah good uh, we've got a question from brace here i'll, I'll bring brace on the line hello brace yeah. how are you Hi, Brace. Can you hear us? Hi. Hello. Where are you calling from? Um, Richmond. In New South Wales? New South Wales. And which squadron is that one? Is that Richmond uh, Squadron? Richmond Squadron. Ah, yeah, yeah. Another one. So what was your question? Um, it was, what was the craziest experience you've had during flight? I ran out of ice cream once. Um, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I, I got really boring stories, but boring is, is good. Um, I, I've, uh, in, in for those who know Hong Kong, um, there's uh, lots of typhoons, which for those who are in Queensland, you'd know cyclones. So definitely we get some really wild weather and uh, I've come into land and the wings have been moving side to side and, and whatnot, but um, we're all trained and um, we're very, well, we know our aircraft, we know the airports really well. So uh, occasionally you you have to do a go round and, and um, the plane, what a go round is, is you come in to land at some point you decide for whatever reason that you're going to start climbing away 
and um, it might be some, some windy conditions or whatnot and you come back around and land. But at the time, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, crazy at all. It's very professional. We're, we're used to it, but um, it just makes it a little bit more interesting on a, on a work day. Okay, great. Running out thank of ice you. cream is never good for the passengers. <laughs> no. Okay, thank you, Brave, for that question. Um, now, we have got a few people who have asked uh, a few questions. Um, so what we might do yeah, is so. when we do um, bring you on, what we'll do is we'll get you to, if, you, if you've asked a couple of questions, ask the one that is sort of most burning for you and that'll let us get through everybody. So we've got uh, Lily Jane here. Lily Jane's got a couple of questions more about your time in the Air League. Yeah. Hi, Lily Jane, can you hear us? Yeah. Howdy, whereabouts are you calling from? Um, I'm from Gold Coast Australian Air League. And, Excellent. Um, What's it like to be like a pilot? Is it like really cool flying planes and stuff like that? It is, it is the best job in the world. Um, and uh, every day I go to work, I, I enjoy it. Um, it's uh, going down the runway and taking off. And you know, we take off at about 150, 160 knots, which in kilometers an hour, you know, it's getting close to almost 300 kilometers an hour. That, uh, that feeling is is unbelievable every time when you have the the engines at full thrust. Uh, so every takeoff is um, definitely uh, I always have a smile on my face, even though maybe I shouldn't. Uh, it's uh, it's um, and then the landing as well. Every every landing is you enjoy it, and and when you have a good landing, it's um, it's very satisfying. When you have a bad landing. Um, you just go. Oh, you just can't wait to the next one because you know that it, the next one is going to be a really smooth landing. So, it's uh, it's definitely um, uh, there's definitely some bad days where, when I say bad days, we also have to fly through the night. So, yeah, not everybody likes being up through the night. But then that's why people choose to do domestic flying instead of long haul. So remember, when you're doing these long haul flights, you can be awake for or be flying for eighteen hours. So, it's um. Yeah, that's, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, thank you very much, Lily Jane. Um, now, we were talking a little bit about the outlook for the industry at the moment, so I might bring on uh, Toby. Toby's got a question on what uh, you think of the uh, outlook for the industry at the moment. Hi, Toby, how are you? Uh, you're on mute at the moment, Toby. You might just need to Hello, unmute yourself, Toby. Hi, Hello, Toby. Hi, Toby. Hi, Toby. Where, whereabouts are you calling from? Uh, Marrickville, Sydney. Ah, excellent. Sorry, what was your yeah. question? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so my question is, what is your outlook for the industry? At the moment? Yeah, of course, um, this, this, uh, there's lots of changes and, and whatnot at the moment. So at the moment, uh, all the international flying, um, well, not all of it, but a lot of the international flying has stopped. But of course, uh, that's going to change. It's going to—it's just a temporary reduction. The one thing that we are noticing and, and working for Qantas at the moment is they're having to start flights, flights again, uh, because we fly so much cargo underneath. So all the letters, all the eBay and Amazon parcels and whatnot. So actually, we're flying empty planes. When I say empty planes, no passengers on there. Um, to move all the cargo that everyone's buying, lots of stuff online. Uh, so, although at the moment it is a, a lot, the airports are very quiet. People will need to start flying again, and um, the domestic flying is going to start getting uh, more and more. So, for those at the moment that are a cadet, once you basically get to a stage where you're um, looking for work. There is going to be lots of jobs out there and whatnot. This is just going to be a problem short term and it won't affect and it definitely should not affect anyone's decision of whether they want to be a pilot or not because um, you know, there are changes um, short term, that, but uh, long term, it's going to be a great career and a great industry. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we'll do a, a quick lightning round. We've got a couple of anonymous ones. If you were offered a contract with Qantas for domestic flying right now, would you take it? 
Uh, yeah, I was waiting for, I've got my name in for domestic. Uh, I want to fly out of Adelaide. So yes, uh, I'm definitely uh, trying for a, for a domestic spot because I've always flown long haul. And I definitely want to try okay. and be, uh, be flying domestic just to try okay. something different. Did you, pref did you prefer as a pilot flying the smaller planes like the Cessnas or the larger airliners? Can I say gliders? Uh, gliders, yeah, uh, gliders is are, are real yeah. flying. I still fly gliders. Um, and, <laughs> I know and a few people so, who say the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so small plane planes are a, a lot more fun because you got to remember when you fly an airliner, if you turn or bank too much, everybody spills their coffee or their drinks. So um, <laughs> you can fly your Cessna and you've only got yourself in there. You can have a bit more fun. But gliders and aerobatics is the best. Okay. Did you ever dream of being a fighter pilot? Um, I considered it. I've always wanted to fly airliners. It's, um, and there's, when I talk about pathways in, that's definitely a pathway that the airline encourages. Uh, I did try uh, and um, Cathay gave me the job first and then yeah. a couple of days later the Air Force called. So, But I, I was passionate about, um, about airlines. Um, yeah. that, uh, there's so many different ways of, of getting into this. I know people want to be helicopter pilots or want to fly yeah. Royal Flying Doctor Service. So. Yeah. Okay, um, how many flight hours have you done? At the moment, my logbook uh, is about um, almost 4,000 hours. I probably should update it a bit, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, but it's about, about 4,000. What is your opinion on the upcoming Boeing Sugar? I don't know if that's a joke about the Max. Don't know that one. Boeing 737 Max? I'm not sure of that. If, some, if, if that was a joke, if somebody wants to pop that in there, uh, that'd be great. Um, I might just dismiss that one for now. Uh, did you have to do any extra training for the A340 and the A350? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I started on the A330, uh, which is Airbus, but Airbus yeah. make their planes very easily that you can go between each one. They look exactly the same uh, on, on the inside. So it is only a couple of extra simulators and uh, even the A350, which is, probably 20 years newer than the A330 in technology, uh, you can just get in a simulator and do some a couple of simulators, learn the differences, but it still flies the same. They um, they program all the software. The Airbus has a side stick, whereas, whereas Boeing which has a yoke. Um, but when you fly any Airbus, they very much handle the same, even the A380, which is, is almost the same in, in terms of landing and takeoff. Uh, here we go. We have a, an answer here. The, the Boeing Sugar, I think it's the electric airliner. Boeing Sugar is yeah. a prototype design plane. All oh, right. Okay. I um, haven't heard about that one. Uh, I yeah. Definitely, it's the way of the future. I, I had a look at a little electric plane at Parafield the other day, and um, they can only get about 60 minutes of battery. I think definitely the, the way forward for, for green energy and, and whatnot, uh, yeah. emissions and whatnot. So, yeah, it's interesting to see what happens with it. Yeah. Did you prefer Cafe Pacific or Qantas? Um, the people who employ you at the moment. Yeah, I um, I, I'm very thankful for my time with Cafe. It was um, this, they were my first employer and they gave me lots of training. Um, the main move to change at Qantas was they wanted to come home and, and work in Australia, so and be back in Australia. So yeah, they've both been great airlines, and I would without a doubt recommend um, both pathways. They both have uh, cadet programs that are there. They've got um, so definitely good opportunities. Okay, um, we've got one here from uh, Seb. Can I ask a question after, please? Um, if you've got any follow-up questions, just hit reply to the email that you would have received for the registration. And what we can do is we can answer any questions that you might want to ask on air uh, at a later date. Uh, here's Alyssa, and she's got a question about your time in the air league. So um, I'll bring you on, Alyssa. Can you hear us? Uh, I think you're okay. I'll just unmute you. Hello, Alyssa. Hello. Can you hear us? Yes. Hello. How are you? Whereabouts are you calling from? Um, from Manly Squadron. Manly is, is that Manly Squadron that you're uh, cadet of? Yes. Excellent. What was your question? Um, how many badges did you get from Air League? Uh, too many. I had my arm was full. It was uh, so I had to take some time off. But um, I, I'd have to look. I do have my old badges and whatnot. But yeah, I definitely did. That too many. That I lost count. So I was trying for the diploma, but I uh, I didn't quite get there to get the the elite diploma. So 
Um, I think, uh, yeah, maybe I'll keep trying for the diploma. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry I can't remember, but I did have a lot. What we might do is I might look it up in our records and I'll let yeah. everybody know <laughs> afterwards. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Alyssa. Um, okay, we've got one here from Mason who asked, did you ever dream of being a jet fighter pilot? I think we've already answered that one. Mm -hmm. um, here's, here's one. What is your, it's an, another anonymous one. Uh, what is your opinion on a university pathway for aviation? Yeah, I am. That's it's probably one of the, the questions that a lot of people ask going through school is, do you need to go to university to be a pilot? Um, so I, I never went to university, um, but yeah, that was uh, one of the decisions that I, I wasn't sure about. Um, I, lots of my friends and colleagues did go through university and did an aviation degree. The good thing about doing a degree in aviation is that you have um, the opportunity to look at different areas. You might go into managing an airline as well, but you don't need to, mainly I do want to highlight, you don't need a degree or go to university to do to become a pilot. And at no time have I ever been asked for that. You just need to complete high school and maybe look at the airline like Qantas, they still want some maths and some um, some English. I think they don't need physics anymore, but just check on the, for example, the Qantas website. Um, but the good thing about some of the university courses is you can do the, the training, the, the actual flying training with them, and you can basically take a loan out through the university. So you don't have to pay for the flying up front. You can, um, Pay, pay the, the bill later on uh, once uh, like any university course so definitely gotta, yeah def definitely you don't need a degree but it is a good option to have and um, yeah okay we've got, we'll do a couple of quick lightning round a couple of more anonymous ones which plane do you fly for Qantas uh, A330 so all I know is Airbus so if you've got any Boeing yeah. questions I don't really know the answer <laughs> but I, I, so I fly the same airliner that I flew when I joined Cathay Pacific and that was years ago in 2012. So. Do you get to see your family a lot? Uh, I'm away for a couple of days, but then the good thing is I get a couple of days off. So um, if I'm away, it's only for three and a half days at the moment or four days, but then I might get four days off. So I probably see my I see my family more than, than the average person would. So. Okay, let's see if we've got any more uh, questions. Uh, we've got Lincoln. Uh, I'll bring Lincoln on. Looking to find Lincoln. Oh, he's not on my screen here. I think he must have hopped off. Uh, Lincoln's question was, what was your favorite uh, type of aircraft to fly? Or favorite A350. aircraft to fly? Yeah, uh, apart from, I've said gliders, but the A350, um, it's the, the latest and greatest plane from Airbus. And um, yeah, it's, it was a great aircraft. Uh, it did, we did almost, uh, eight, I think it was 18 and a half hour flights, uh, going from Hong Kong to um, you know, sometimes over the North Pole and whatnot, um, going to places in North America and whatnot. Uh, we're shorter coming back if there's different different winds and different paths, but uh, that, the A350 is a fantastic aircraft and um, has a heads up display, just like the fighter jet. So you can, when you're looking yeah. through the front window, um, and it's, it's uh, really a really nice aircraft to fly, but my answer is gliders. Mm. Yeah, and I guess I've got a question here from John Hickman. What aircraft manufacturer would you prefer? Definitely Airbus, but okay. it's, it's like Holden versus yeah. Ford. Uh, <laughs> they're both they're both great. So um, they're definitely I, I'm I'm trying to I've sat in the jump seat, which is the seat behind the pilots, with um, with my current airline on the seat watching um, on the 737, a little bit different, but I'm, I'm definitely, I want to try that and see what Boeing's like in, in the future. Okay, we had a couple of with this question, so I'll bring on Connor. Uh, Connor has a question about the uh, sort of family balance. I can't find Connor here, let me just quickly, do I search, we've got so many people on now. That's good to see. Uh, no, he's uh, looks like he's dropped off. Uh, Connor's question was, how often do you get to see your family? Yeah, so I think I was saying a couple of questions ago. It's uh, with long haul flying, you're away for three and a half, maybe four days, but then sometimes you can get a week off. So it's uh, um, whereas if you're flying domestically, you're home pretty much home every night. You might be only away once once a once a month. Um, so I think more than than, than a normal job, but just uh, different maybe 
some uh, a couple of days where you are away, which um, it can, can obviously change it. But then domestic flying is is for those that maybe and I'm thinking now that maybe I want to change it and be home every night or uh, at least uh, every day. Okay, we've got a question here from John Hickman. A bit of a uh, a variation on your favourite aircraft. Hello, John. How are you? Hello. Hi, John. Hello, John. Which uh, squadron are you from? I'm from Parramatta Squadron in Sydney. I know that one. Yes. Uh, what was your question? Um, which one was it? Was it uh? What plane that you don't have the opportunity to fly, would you fly? Um, I always wanted to fly the 747 Jumbo. I think every pilot wants to fly in that one. Um, but as we are, we all know the Jumbo, it's the most famous plane, but um, they're really not, there's not too many flights now. They're retiring all the, all the Jumbos. Uh, Qantas is probably going to retire theirs uh, very soon. Um, they've been talking about it, but uh, I, I, if I could... Say I fly one aircraft, I would love to have flown the jumbo, but I don't think I'm ever going to have the opportunity. They do make them as, as cargo, but unfortunately, uh, very few airlines fly them. Okay, thanks very much, John. Uh, we've got a couple here, uh, just a couple more anonymous ones, or people have already had a go. Have you ever skydived? Yeah, I tried it once. Uh, there's an old saying that why jump out of a perfectly good aircraft? Uh, okay. I think you definitely try it once, it's great. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, well, we already had Lily Jane on, but she asked, what was your favourite part of being an early cadet and what badges interested you most as a cadet? Yeah, um, obviously making all the friends and whatnot. I joined with eight and yeah. um, I, I really enjoyed the, actually the drill. I didn't like drill at the start, but uh, being an NCO and getting to do the, the orders, you know, yelling the drill commands, and it's amazing the confidence you get from that. So I would not be where I am today without going through the cadet ranks, you know, getting to become a leading cadet corporal and sergeant uh, from the training and also um, my favourite badge uh, definitely would be the gliding badge, but theory of flight, um, I was always interested in learning why planes fly and whatnot. So, yeah, I did like drill the drill badge as well. Okay, great. Um, we've got one now, Hugo. Hugo has a question about routes. Hello, yeah. Hugo. Hello. G'day, Hugo. Whereabouts are you coming from? Uh, Doncaster, Victoria. Ah, uh, so Doncaster Squadron? Yep. Yep, I know that one very well. Uh, oh. What route did you prefer flying over all the airlines you flew for? Yeah, um, flying from Hong Kong to North America. So we'd go to, to basically New York. Um, we'd often fly over the pole, so the North Pole. And uh, yeah, just looking down and all you can see is ice and, and whatnot. There's uh, you know, flying over Russia and places like that where there's, there's not really anybody out there, but you can see the glaciers. And then at night you can see the Northern Lights. So if you ever want to Google an image of the Northern Lights, it's a very spectacular. So we spend hours in the, is these lights that are uh, created by the, the, the solar effects basically or the atmospheric effects. So yeah, it's, um, that was my favorite. Yep, thank you. Okay, thank you, Hugo. Okay, uh, Brandon has a question here on emergencies. Uh, Brandon, uh, thank you. Can you hear us? Yeah. G'day, Brandon. Uh, did you have any emergency landings or aborted takeoffs? And uh, no, my um my flying has been very boring. Now boring is is is, uh, is good. Um, so air, aviation and, and particularly airlines are so safe and and whatnot. But what I have had is lots of emergencies in the simulator. So some of those photos that you've seen uh in the in the sim when we were in the simulator, we have all the things you can think of going wrong. So we're ready for anything in there. So. You uh you practice the evacuations. You practice what happens if you fly one engine, and the main thing is that you have the training and the confidence that you can get on the ground and um, everybody's safe. So lots of emergencies in the simulator only, and um, it shows that uh, if we get to practice and it shows uh, training that uh, we can get on the ground safely. If even the things that very rarely go wrong um, do go wrong, and so but. 
all those things are safe for the simulator. So um, we, we do have to do lots of study to, for those those cases, but um, as I said, definitely very safe for our lines. Okay, oh. thank you, Brandon. Uh, we've got here, we've got uh, Thomas. Thomas is looking for a bit of the uh, inside goss on cadet ships. Yeah, uh, definitely. Thomas, hello. Hi, how's it going? Good day, Thomas. Where, what squadron are you from? Uh, Sutherland Shire. Excellent. Um, so your question's about cadet ships, is it? Ah, uh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, there's, there's so many options, uh, and it varies each year. Uh, obviously, Qantas is setting up their new new cadet school, which um, is uh, not guaranteed to get a job, but at least you're mm. uh, in the in the forefront of, of uh, once you go through. They're, they're basically looking at how you're going to offer you something in the Qantas group mm. at the end. Uh, there's been over the years uh, um, Rex, Regional Express, uh, Alliance, um, which do the regional flying uh, to the mining sites and, and whatnot. They've had cadet programs. Uh, there's been even the smaller, um, the re regional airlines, uh, I'm sure if you know Sharp Airlines, um, if you're from Victoria, uh, I think you said, um, then um, you know, you've got those sort of smaller cadet ships. There's basically more cadet ships than there are than there's ever been. And there's, uh, the good thing about cadet ships is you know uh, we've almost got a guaranteed pathway into that job. Yeah, that's right. I was just, uh, what, what my question was more based around is I was gonna ask, what would you, is there anything you can do to boost your chances to get a cadet ship with an airline? Like uh, get your RPL with the Air League or complete high school properly? Is there anything else you can do to yeah. sort of tweak that? Yeah, definitely. Um, high school generally is for most of the airlines is a requirement, not the hardest of all subjects, but just finishing year, year 12. Some of the regional airlines may not require that, I'm not sure. Uh, it's always good to have some sort of practice or, or training, whether it's gliding or um, like you said, an RPL, which is a recreational parts license, which is a first license, but even getting first solo in a small plane, because if they'll ask you, well, how do you know you want to do a full on front bench if you've never been in a plane before? So the good thing is to go out there and say, well, actually I've gone solo in a, in a or a plane or done this training and I loved it. So getting some experience out there, it doesn't have to be a lot, it just needs to be you know, enough that you say that um, you can say, you know, hand on your heart that this is for me and I'm passionate about flying. Uh, every time I've done an interview with any airline, air links come up and what I've done with the airline and, and it's been that they are just um, very interested in, in the air links of uh, work on us. Hi all, we just had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties here. Uh, I think somebody just drove a, a truck through our power lines out here or our internet lines, but uh, I think I'm back now, so um, I think Tim should be back with us in a moment. Yeah, I, uh, I'm back with you now. I, uh, unfortunately, the hosting, well, the, the session stopped yeah. uh, while you, you left for a brief amount of time, so it should be back now, hopefully. Okay, great. Not, not quite sure what happened there. Our internet dropped out for a moment or two, but uh, I seem to be back. Uh, so what I'm going to do, firstly of all, I'm just going to pop up a quick poll uh, I see we've still got a number of attendees uh, online. Uh, is everybody still here? If you can hit the yes or the no, that'd be really good, thanks. All right, we've got lots here. Do we keep going? Yes, the answer is yes. So I'll just uh, bring up our Q&A questions again. And I'll also go back to uh, putting some nice pictures on screen. That's great, got lots of people still on board. Okay, uh, Tim, do you remember the last question we had? I think it was about uh, Thomas's one on... Uh, yeah, cadet ships and cadet um, ship. basically what you can do to um, yeah. you know, better yourself to be in a position and, and no doubt being in the Air League is um, every time it's come up and um, it's uh, an airlines and any any job really. <laughs> The job at Woolworths uh, that I did, you know, that they asked me about Air League and, and um, they got me a job, a job there. So uh, it's, uh, it's amazing how people know about the Air League and appreciate um, what skills you get out of it, leadership and teamwork, etc. 
Great. I've got two people who say no, don't keep going. Okay, you can uh, log off. Okay, still got lots of questions here. Um, what high school subjects did you do? Um, yes, yeah, so I, I always knew that um, I wanted to try for, for Qantas and I knew that they wanted um, some, the maths, English and, and physics. But that's changed a little bit now. But I, yeah, I did uh, did maths, English, physics, uh, and also geography. So the standard ones. Um, but just if you are wanting to know, look at the Qantas website what they need if you are wondering what subjects to study for, for the airlines. Okay, we've got Christian here. He's got a couple of questions. So uh, Christian, I'll have to get you to keep it fairly short. I see you've got a few questions here. Have you got a question for Tim? Uh, yeah, I do have a few actually. I'll keep it short. Get a question. Whereabouts are you from? I'm from New Jersey Squadron in Victoria. Oh, excellent. Um, my question is, what's the hardest thing you've faced and how did you overcome it? Uh, definitely my first officer training in, in Cathay Pacific. So obviously they're making sure that uh, you're you're ready to do landings in, in the plane and whatnot. So when I went out and flew, I'm not sure if you heard earlier, I did uh, some circuits, about seven or eight circuits in an empty A330, no passengers. Yep. Yeah, being ready for that um, was uh, definitely the biggest challenge and um, probably the most nervous I've been at any time in my career. But I'm still once you once you're out there doing the landings, uh, the training kicks in. So. All right, thank you. That's right. Okay, thank you, Christian. Uh, we got uh, Jamison here. Uh, Jamison here has a question about career paths as well. Uh, let me just find you, Jamison. Okay, I think Jamison has uh, popped off. But Jamison's question was, in your opinion, what's the best pathway or opportunity to take to get into aviation industry and become a pilot? And how would you get to that pathway? Yeah, uh, obviously, um, sorry, is, is, are they there or is it a written question? Uh, I think they've uh, dropped off. Okay, that's right. Um, it's uh, definitely airline cadetships or, or going through the military is, is almost a certain pathway, you know, with your training, what's going to happen at the other side? Um, but of course, they're not the only pathways. If you, uh, if my video might be back now, if yeah. um, you go through just any flying school or a, a basically a university type course, at the other, you might have a license at the other end, but then you've got to go out and find jobs. You might fly some scenic. You might become a flying instructor. Um, so that there's there's definitely some different aspects, but. The most certain is if you join the Qantas cadetship or the Cathay Pacific cadetship, or you join the through the Defence Force, you know what's going to happen at the other side, generally. So, okay, do a couple of lightning round ones. Lewis asks, "Do you enjoy your job?" Of course, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, it's we not covered... really, it's not really a job. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Um, what would be your favourite aircraft? I think we've already found that with a glider. Uh, Caleb asks, do you ever fall asleep while flying? Uh, the answer is not while flying, but while, while at work, because we are actually doing, uh, on these long flights, we have bunk beds. So it's um, we do go back and we have two teams and one team will go back. So, yeah, there's definitely, uh, you're flying um, and sleeping, but you're not at the controls as such. Okay, how many flights would you do a week, Tiana asks. Long haul fly, I might not do any. I might do one every week and a half. But if, uh, okay. when I was a fly instructor, I did, uh, I think I went out 100 landings in one week, you know, because you're going around Parafield Airport doing lots of landings. So. Okay. Uh, who else we got? Lewis says hello. Hello, Lewis. Uh, Aiden asks, is the pathway for a pilot and an instructor different? Uh, being an instructor is one of the job opportunities after you do your commercial license. So after you do your training and the small aircraft, you can then go and fly some charter, maybe some scenic, or you could go on and be at that point and become a, a teacher on, on small planes. Um, so it definitely is, is maybe an option at the end of your training if you don't want to do some charter flying or you're not involved with an airline cadet program. You don't have to be a teacher, and, and I'd only recommend being an instructor if you love teaching or enjoy teaching. And um, because um, people that don't tend to want to do that, they go on to be the do the charter type jobs, yeah. taking passengers around. Okay, we've got a question from Alana. I'll bring her on about your fondest time in the air league. Alana, you're on. 
Hi. Alana. Yes. Which squad um, are you from? I'm from Dawson Girls. Oh, excellent. And what was your question? Um, my question is, what is your fondest memory from your time in the Air League? Yeah, um, being the cadet of the year, definitely it was my proudest moment. Um, but definitely uh, getting promoted to uh, being like a sergeant was definitely my um, my proud, my also my, my fondest and my proudest my memory as well. So, yeah, definitely being a, being an MCO. Okay, thank you. That's right. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll just do a couple more lightning rounds. What's your longest flight, Caleb asks? Oh, good question. Um, I think closer to on, on uh, with some strong headwinds uh, and uh, some interesting flight planning paths, so closer to 18 hours um, going from Hong Kong to North America. It can be anywhere from, uh, if it's, the, we get big jet streams, which are like rivers of, of air and we can do it in you know, sort of 13, 14 hours. But um, yeah, if we get some interesting flight plans, um, yeah, it can be, if you add some delays on the ground as well, can be a long time, like 18 hours. So remember, we have four pilots, a big team of pilots for those sort of flights. Okay, uh, I've got Tiana. She's got a question about paperwork. Okay, Tiana. Um, Hi, Tiana. Where, whereabouts are you calling from? Uh, Sydney Marathon Squadron. Oh, excellent. What was your question? Uh, on after you are fly, okay, say for example, you've landed and you've finished your um shift yep um what paperwork do you have to do after yeah so uh at the moment uh, we don't do any paperwork because it's all on the ipad uh but yeah in the but it's still paperwork it's still forms so we have to fill in how much um or who did the landing for example because we need to make sure we're doing landings every every maybe every 90 days or for example we need to do a landing um we need to record how many hours uh, at night and whatnot. So there is a little bit of paperwork. It's not much. Um, the, the flight attendants, the cabin crew do some paperwork as well. So it's definitely a, a team effort, but there's not that much paperwork. So we normally, uh, we've also got to write up if, if there's been any problems with the aircraft at all. So maybe there's a light out in the cabin or um, maybe one of the screens, the windscreen needs cleaning. So we're, we, we write it in a, in, a, in a book that has uh, for the engineers or the, the technical staff and they can wash our windows. So things like that. Yeah, there's a little bit of paper, but not a lot. It's all okay. on an iPad. That's right. Okay, thanks a lot, Tiana. A couple more anonymous ones. Uh, when you fly normally, do you have the same first or second officer? No, no that's, a, that's a good question. Um, it's probably one of the only jobs where every time you go to work, you're flying with different um, completely different uh, colleagues so most of the time I've never met the, the captain or the, the uh, first officer or the other second officer or whatnot um, it's, uh, it's diff different so you, you shake hands or we used to shake hands um, <laughs> every time we meet and um, then uh, you'd introduce yourself and um, occasionally you'd see the same person twice but it's, 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 it's different because many jobs you go to work with the same same people each time so it does but we all speak the same language because the training and the procedures we do are all the same. So even though we never met the person, we can trust who's sitting next to us to, to be able to do the same routine and procedures. Okay. We've got a young cadet here, Rodney. Uh, Rodney, you're on the line. Uh, you're mute at the moment, Rodney. Let's see if I can unmute you. Uh, Rodney asks, have you sorry. ever had... Yep. Sorry, here we go. You're there? So, sorry, I couldn't find um, how to unmute it. Yeah, first no, officer, no, uh, Albion Park Squadron. How yeah. are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, uh, I was just wondering, um, have you had any passengers uh, that were really famous? Uh, yeah, I've had some, some movie stars and, and whatnot on board, but uh, mostly out of Hong Kong. And um, some of them I didn't know because they were famous in Hong Kong and whatnot. But um, yeah, we tend, we've had a few, but I tend not to tell who we've been on board because obviously we've got to protect everybody's privacy and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, you see a few, few names out there. Cool, cool. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, I can't answer the, the specifics yeah. though. <laughs> Uh, a few more anonymous ones. Does flight planning take a lot of time? Yeah, great question, actually. Um, normally, I get to work about um, 
two hours before the, the pushback time. So we, we get to a dispatch room or a briefing room um, and we meet one hour before the flight uh, pushes back. And so we'll go through and with the weather, uh, the no towns, which are the notice to crew basically, mm -hmm. you know, whether there's lights out at an airport or maybe there's a navigation beacon that's out or whatnot. So some of these can, can be like lots of pages of reading, but you can skim through it very quickly. Uh, and, um, and we, so I'll get there two hours before. Uh, so I'll have an hour to um, read it myself. And normally the other crew start showing up within a, within 20 or 30 minutes. So I always like getting there early and we start chatting about how much, um, you know, what the weather's doing and our flight plan and whatnot. We can take some extra fuel than, than the, what basically the flight dispatch has given us if the weather's bad. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there is a little bit of planning and whatnot, um, lots of decisions. Yeah. Um, Here's another one on uh, flight planning. What's the difference between a US and an Australian flight plan? Uh, in terms of uh, the routing, I wonder. Oh, I guess the procedures is in, I guess it's totally yeah. different airspace and different uh, rules and. Uh, yeah, um, going into America, there's, they've got some um, different procedures and whatnot. Um, they're very different to the, the other areas of the world. Um, so they've got their own local procedures. So I do, if I'm going to the States, I need to make sure that I'm aware of those. If I go to China, they don't use feet, they use meters for the altimeter and, and whatnot, which we always, always fly. 30,000 feet, for example, or whatever it may be, but in China or and um, place like that, they uh, they use meters. So we've, we've got to adjust our procedures and plan for, for that. So there's, there's definitely um, uh, differences there, but America has their own little differences, I suppose, to Australia. Okay, just a quick poll for everybody who's still with us. Do we want to keep going? Uh, what's the best moment while flying? Another an anonymous one while we wait for everybody to answer here. This moment. Um, I think um, I've talked about the, the circuits but uh, and, and the northern lights, which um, you, you see these as lights. Um, but obviously, first solo is always the uh, the one that always um, comes back to me. First time your instructor jumps out on the ground and says, take it for a, for a spin, turn around, do a circuit. So that, that's always probably the, the highlight of any pilot. Okay, I'll just see if we've got any more interesting ones here. There's a few that uh, are repeats that we've had. I've got a couple of invites to visit squadrons. Can you visit Canberra squadron? Yeah, we don't, we're next in Canberra, yeah. I think it'll be a little while, but um, I have I have been to the through Canberra and um, yeah. uh, and the centre squadron there. Um, so, yeah, definitely if I'm through other other states, I will try and say hello. Um, Neo asked how many go-rounds have you done in your time as a pilot? I'm going to answer here and I'm going to say lots. <laughs> Being in a flight in a career, on this, on, yeah, in a, in a glider, none, because uh, you can't go, you can't really go around. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, as a flying instructor on the parafield or on the small planes, a lot, uh, lost count. Mm -hmm. On the airliners, um, definitely can count on one hand. Um, yeah. it's, it's generally been, maybe it's been a bit windy or whatnot. And, there's nothing wrong with doing a go around. It's always a safe option. You come back okay. and try another landing. We got uh, we got a question here from Landon about Boeing. So uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this one, but we'll give it a go. Landon, how are you? Hi, right, Landon, you're on. If you just hit the unmute. Hopefully that works for you. Hello. Hello. Hi, Landon. Hey. Hello. Hello. Which squadron are you from? I'm from Cranbourne Squadron. Hey, Victoria. Yeah. Yes. What was your question? Oh, um, why did they um, why did they retire lots of ju jumbo jets? Yeah, good question. Um, so any airline with four engines uses not quite double the amount of fuel, but uh, a lot more more extra fuel than, um, and, and petrol is very expensive. So uh, unfortunately, the uh, the older planes with four engines just aren't, uh, they cost too much to run. And, and these newer planes like the A350 Airbus and the Boeing 787, with what they can, and even the 777 uh, Boeing, with two engines, they can almost do the same, but with less fuel. So uh, for, just to give you an idea, um, if we flying from um, North America to Hong Kong, the triple seven, which is, if you know your GP books, that's Boeing, that would take 
120 tons of fuel. The A350, we took 100 tons of fuel. So even with more modern aircraft, 20 years of difference in technology, the engines are more and more efficient. So older planes would burn well above that. Um, so unfortunately, it's uh, it's just cost and, and how much petrol these aircraft use. Okay, thanks a lot, Landon. Uh, we've got Aston, and Aston's got a question about emergencies. Aston. Hello, Aston. You might need to unmute yourself there. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Which squadron are you calling from? Uh, I'm from, from the Warner's Base Squadron. Okay, which which state's that? I haven't heard of that one. Uh, it's in New, so New South Wales. Ah, gotcha. What was your question? My question was... I oh. think you were asking about how would you land an emergency? Yes, yes, thank you. How okay, would you, you want to ask? Yeah. Yes, how would you, how would you land, how would you land, how would you emergency land a plane? Yeah, so I suppose, in this, we were talking before, in the simulator, we practice lots of emergencies and, and whatnot. Uh, so fortunately, never done it in real life, and it's very rare, but we have um, lots of uh, procedures we do so we can fly very safely on one engine even if the other one's not working as the aircraft flies fine but we need to make sure that first of all can we land on the runway is it long enough um, and we also need to make sure that you know everything is set up for for the computers and the flight controls for, for whatever it may be so we, we have some checklists we do and uh, we do some calculations to make sure that what we can where we go is safe and, and we can get in to land um, and then even landing on one engine on a, on a big Airbus, the other one is just, we'd say, is, is broken, not working. It just uh, it seems like a normal landing because these uh, aircraft have, are so safe and, and have what we call redundancy as the backups. So yeah, it almost becomes a normal landing. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Thank you. That's okay, right. thanks a lot. Uh, we have, uh, let me see, a few of the, uh, participants have dropped off. We're uh, sort of getting going for an hour and 20 minutes now, which has been uh, really good to have so many uh, interesting questions. Uh, thanks for everybody who did come on. Uh, I'll do a bit of a lightning round for some of the people who have uh, dropped off. Um, have you ever had to dump fuel in a flight? Uh, once, um, and that was in the A340. That's, uh, but fortunately, A330, A350, we can, we don't need to dump fuel. We can land at heavy weights above our, our maximum landing weight. Um, we just need a very soft landing. So the, the days of fuel dumping are pretty much, um, uh, you don't need to do it anymore, which is great. It saves money and better for the environment. Okay, Thomas is telling us for glider pilots, the propeller is just a giant fan to cool down the pilot when the propeller stops. You can see the pilot sweating. Yep, that's why okay. gliding uh, definitely helps. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I have Caitlin raising her hand, but I can't see Caitlin. Um, do you think planes are going to be autonomous in the future? Yeah, good question. Um... I guess eventually um, we've got driverless planes as our driverless cars and trains, um, the automation's there and we can already do um, takeoffs on the autopilot, oh, sorry, landings, I should say, not, not takeoffs, uh, landings on the autopilot, but they don't do as good a job with strong winds as what we can do, but because the technology is getting better. Uh, but of course, I think everybody would like a pilot up the front to make sure the things, things uh, are being watched carefully and whatnot, just as, just like people want to make sure that there's somebody in their car, if they're in a taxi that's driverless. Okay, uh, had heaps of great questions. I think we'll probably get about another five minutes. I'll just get a, another quick lightning round. Uh, had any bird strikes? Yes, I've, I've had a few, um, but uh, they're, they're very, very rare. Birds have a, have a way of getting out of the way, but unfortunately, I've, I've had a few, and they don't really cause any damage um, on the on the big planes anyway. Yeah. But um, no, they're definitely uh, not not very common. Would you ever fly a Russian aircraft, Russian commercial uh, aircraft? 
as a as a passenger or a pilot, it'd be interesting. I guess to, both. <laughs> yeah, uh, something different, I suppose. Something that uh, I um I would would like to. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to have the opportunity. Okay. Um, we had Seb here. I think he's not on now. Um, unfortunately, this thing doesn't quite sort alphabetically for me, which is a bit of a a bother. Uh, Seb asks, uh, how hard was type rating for the A330 and how long did it take? Well, it took a um, couple of months and uh, that was my first airline and I've been flying small planes. So lots of simulator. I think um, it could be almost 20 simula simulators and, and training sessions. We have um, other smaller simulators that you with touch screens. So uh, yep. you learn all your, so it can be a couple of months to, um, to, to almost when then when you go and become a first officer from a second officer, then there's mm -hmm. probably another couple of months there. So definitely lots of full on training, full time training. Um, but it goes, it's it's great. It's it's fun along the way as well. Okay, who else do we have here? Uh, given that you usually fly Airbus, does this mean you're not allowed to fly Boeing? I guess it's really just about type rating. Yeah, um, I would have to do some training to basically fly a Boeing and, and I know to be honest I couldn't fly other Airbuses I need to do some training but the basic principles there up goes up down goes down left goes left <laughs> and right goes right so uh, just would just require some, some training extra training okay um, does anybody have uh, a lot of the questions we've got left now are, are repeats or, or we've already covered if anybody has any burning questions what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh get you just to pop your question in the the chat window down here we'll just do a quick lightning round do you use bose a20 i'm sorry i lost my audio uh, my video there sorry i think the audio is still working um i yeah. i bought the bose a20 um mm -hmm. i used to use the light speed zulu when i was a flying instructor but even um I was looking at changing to the 737 flying domestic with with Qantas, yeah. so they actually use Bose A A20s in the in the 737 because the seven the Boeing 737 is quite noisy, so the A and R is quite good. Yeah. Uh, favorite place you flew to? Uh, going to to New York City at night uh, is and, and Hong Kong was always uh, very specky at night as well. So, but okay. Sydney Sydney's one of the other during the day the yeah. most uh, specky approaches. Okay. Any downsides to being a pilot? Um, I guess working at night time if okay. there's a shift job, so yep. yeah, definitely, yeah, it's, a, it's something that could be a challenge. How often do you fly with autopilot on? Good question. Uh, so we do the takeoffs and generally most landings uh, ourselves, but um, when we're flying in the or when we're climbing up and in the cruise, we put the autopilot on, it can be as simple or as quick as on the 335 seconds after takeoff or 100 feet. Um, but uh, generally we'll hand fly to have a bit of bit of fun and a bit of practice uh, as well. And uh, in the cruise, we must be on the uh, autopilot because there's yeah. so many different uh, separation requirements for other planes and, and whatnot these days. Okay. Christian asks, what do you think of the new flight simulator 2020? Given that you get access to the, the big simulators, I guess you haven't had the chance to look at it yet. No, I saw the preview and it looks, um, it's pretty awesome actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm using, we're using X-Plane in our Parafield simulator. Um, yep. Of course, we'll have a look and see what happens. There might be uh, the graphics look amazing. Yeah, here's an early question. What was the hardest badge you've got from Caleb? Um, probably the sewing badge. <laughs> I'm not very good at sewing, so uh, no. it's probably easier for, for other people, but for me, it wasn't. Yeah, Neo asks, have you been trained on the Max 8? What do you think about MCAS? I guess that's a Boeing question. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I don't know too much about that one as well. But okay. uh, I think that yeah, that hopefully that the Boeing will have them flying again soon. Yeah, and Braith asks, have you built any radio-controlled aircraft? If so, which one? Uh, that's one thing I never did, and I want to I want to start doing it. So yeah, um, no, unfortunately, that's one one area I want to want to try. And well, to make this the last one from Hugo, uh, are you a Patriot Airbus? If so, Airbus fans unite. Um, I am because I've flown them, but uh, Airbus or Boeing, to me, it's you know it's the same. They both got their their pros and their cons, um, and uh, people do like it's a bit like Holden or Ford. But uh, if, if you get the opportunity to fly either one, you're just happy to be in whatever they they put in. So we don't generally get a choice 
not much of a choice which one we fly. So either way, it's it's a, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. All right. Um, well, that's brought us for up an hour and a half. Um, I'd like to thank all of the cadets who came on. You've asked some really, uh, really good questions. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Tim for being our very first uh, webinar live guest. Uh, and I think this went really well. So I've got one last poll question um, for everyone. Uh, would you like to do more of these Q&A topics? Hopefully you all get to see that poll up on screen. It's a resounding yes so far. We've got 11, 13, 15, 16. Oh, one person doesn't want any more. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to register. Uh, it looks pretty, pretty good. We've got 21 out of 23. No, I think everybody really enjoyed it. Um, so once again, I'd just like to, if everybody can just uh, pop in the chat window. Thank you for Tim for uh, taking some time out of his evening. And yeah, uh, thank it's you really for, great for letting me uh, come along. And um, no, it's great to speak to everybody. And of course, if you do have any any questions or whatnot, um, I'll stay on a bit longer for the chat window and, and whatnot uh, to uh, to answer that. But uh, just want to keep uh, everyone um, focused on the fact that it's such a great industry to work in, and there's so many different opportunities, not just flying. And the air league will put you in a really good position to uh, to do whatever you want to do in aviation and flying. Okay, thanks everyone. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we'll try to get the recording of this up online um, during the week. So everybody who wasn't able to, to join in can, can catch up and just keep watching the Air League website or uh, social media and we'll have details of uh, future upcoming sessions. Uh, if anybody wants to stay and ask some questions, um, I think Tim's got access to the chat as well. So we should be able to answer your questions for a couple more minutes.